Again, and uh, welcome to a uh, rather wet and windy day in uh, Wigan, in uh, in the northwest of England. What I'd like to do is talk to you today about uh, long exposures and about why I enjoy doing them so much in my photography. I think they can turn a dull day, a rather uh, dreary day like today, into something a little bit more magical. So, what is long exposure? Well, it's not the normal thing you get arrested for. No, something completely different. When we talk about it in photography, it's about slowing down time in the, uh, in the photograph. And what it does, it uh, can give motion to water, even though we're talking about a still image, uh, to water, to clouds, even traffic. To uh, really enhance an image and really give you a bit more detail. It can be used a number of ways just to give you a bit more uh, of a different view of the, uh, the photograph and the image you're looking for. So on a day like today where it's uh, completely drizzly, uh, we've got rain across everywhere, it's an ideal opportunity to, uh, to do some long exposure. So we'll, uh, we'll have a look and see what we can get. What do you need to think about when you're doing long exposure? Well, it's the same as any photography, you need to think about your exposure triangle, which is your ISO, your f-stop or aperture, and your shutter speed. Now, let's talk about your ISO. That controls the amount of light digitally that comes into your camera. So, in the old days, it used to buy, used to buy an ISO 400 film and that was uncontrollable. But on modern DSLRs and uh, mirrorless cameras now, you can control that with uh, a touch of a button. So you need to keep your ISO as low as it can go. So ideally ISO 100, some DSLRs go down to 64. Um, some of the mirrorless cameras are ISO 200. So have a look on your camera and see what your lowest setting you can have and keep it to that. So, now you've got your ISO sorted, you need to focus on your aperture mode. Um, this is quite simple, just raise it as high as you can. Now, the downside of this, the higher the number, so only after sort of F14, your images will start to come in a little bit soft, but it's great for practicing. So what that will do, ultimately, is uh, be able to give you a slower shutter speed, which is ideally what we're looking for. So, your f-stop number, as high as it can go, crank that up, and then we'll uh, focus on the speed. Okay, so you shut the speed. Ideally, a long exposure is anything I sort of warrants is over a second or a second and above to, uh, to as long as you like, really. Now the trick is to do as much as we can to allow us to uh, lower that shutter speed. Now the shutter speed, the longer it's open, will allow more light in. So we need to reduce that light coming in. So the simple setup I'm gonna use now is just simply the camera and the tripod. 
the tripod's needed to make sure that there's no movement in the picture at all. Because if we're talking about a second exposure, any movement within the camera will make that image all blurry and you'll get a thing called motion blur. We're going to try and get rid of that completely by making sure the camera is secure on the tripod with no movement whatsoever. Also, turn off image stabilization on your camera as well and your lens. Because what tends to happen, the camera thinks, oh, I need to compensate and, and try and move the image slightly. That also adds a little bit of blur. So, uh, while it's on the tripod, turn stabilization completely off. There's no need for it. So, we'll see what we can get. So what benefits do uh, long exposures have? Well, there's a number of benefits really. First of all, on the shot like we've done now, we can smooth out the water, but it can also make uh, clouds look as if they're moving across in the sky. Now that does take a little bit longer than uh, a, a second. You're probably looking at around about 30 second exposure for something uh, like that. It de depends how windy it is as well. It can also be quite effective as well when it's windy and the trees are blowing. When you get the leaves blowing, you do a long exposure, you get a lot of blur within the leaves. But if it's focused on one item in the middle of the shot, say, then that stands out really well and the rest of it is all blurred. So it's quite a good effect to have. Also, if you're doing a cityscape as well, something like a, let's say, a cathedral, it's good to do a long exposure, um, anything above 30 seconds. Now, we're talking about introducing uh, filters, as I've mentioned a few times. But what uh, the filters do, they allow you to really slow down that shutter speed. So it's like effectively putting a pair of sunglasses on the front of your lens. And what that will do, slow that shutter speed right down put to run about 30 seconds, or it depends how, how big you go, probably to a minute. So anything that moves in front of the camera over that minute time kind of gets deleted. So you actually get rid of people. And it's a great effect to have. And it's also good for night photography as well. So if you're doing something, um, well, let's keep to the cathedral theme. If, you, if you're shooting a cathedral, it's got the lights on, etc. All the people disappear. So anybody that's walking in front of the camera, anybody that's out on the street, won't appear in the shop. So a good little te uh, technique to have. So that's why we do long exposure. To give it a little bit of uh, a different feel, something a little bit arty, and something that uh, your eye can't actually see. Uh, I think that's always quite good in, in photography. So like I say, you need tripod, you need your camera. I use an in intervalometer sometimes. And what that does, that allows you to take the shot without actually touching the camera. Again, we're after not moving the camera or touching the camera as minimal as possible, just to make sure that the camera will not move and throughout that exposure, it's, uh, it's crystal clear. Ooh. So another advantage I find for um, long exposure photography is it makes you slow down instead of just going to a location and reeling off 50 odd shots um, sorry crossing the river 50 odd shots wet feet ah, 50 odd shots of, of nothing with a real good composition what it does it slows you down and it gives you the opportunity to look at the, the surroundings see what you've got then take the long exposure and work on it from there so it's all about work it's all a working process so don't be frustrated if you go to a particular location to do long exposure and it doesn't work. What I suggest to you is to go out to a local place um, and to somewhere you know really. It's preferably got uh, running water through it, maybe a waterfall. Gosh, yeah, we all live in paradise. Um, but yeah, all um, go to a local location, pick somewhere that uh, you know you can possibly get long exposure shots from and just practice. And this is what it's all about. And this is photography basics really is just practice your, uh, your long exposures. How many more times can I say long exposure in a sentence? But, uh, but yeah, it's, it's all about that. It's all about the practice. It's all about getting taken out by trees. And the thing is, photography is always a learning curve. We're always learning from this, uh, 
from this profession, from this uh, this hobby that we do. And learning is all part of the uh, the fun process. You, you see a sense of achievement once you've uh, mastered it, and once you you understand um, certainly the basics of um, long exposure photography. But also then you start going into your filters. Now I've not been able to use the filters today because the weather conditions are too. Uh, yeah, too wet and what happens is obviously when you're doing a long exposure certainly for around 30 seconds you um, you tend to get water on the front of the uh, the filter and uh, it all blurs the image out etc so it doesn't really work out that well but I'll uh, I'll show you some long exposure shots I've done in the past uh, so you can get, sort of get a sense of what uh, what these these images are like and uh, and the effects you can get from them about to leave already packing come with me i'm not really asking we'll get away to a place where we don't know about to see the world in action what we can be life with no distractions we'll get away this is what we waited for I hope you've enjoyed this video. I've certainly enjoyed making it. So really good fun being out. It's a bit strange still, filming yourself, recording yourself going through a forest. You do get some strange looks, but uh, I think it's all part and parcel of it. So I really hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please consider subscribing. Those subscriptions really mean a lot, and thank you. A big shout out to everybody who's already done that. Um, yeah, really, uh, really motivates me to get out there. Also, likes as well, give us a, a good old thumbs up. But also, um, leave a comment as well. It'd be great to hear from you. So from Dean Woods, in Wigan, out. Oh.